Welcome back to Sew with Sari. So in today's episode, we're gonna be making a classic gathered skirt. And my favorite part of the skirt is definitely the waistband, which combines elastic and drawstring for an effect that's both really flattering, I think, but also really comfortable to wear, which is super important to me. So stick around to see how to do it step by step. If you have a few yards of fabric laying around, you're not sure what to do with them, this might be the project for you. And I just really love creating this waistband. It's really fun to sew and it's really fun to wear. And if midi skirts aren't really your thing, that's totally fine. You can make this in any length you want. So be sure to stay to the end. I'm also gonna show you a tool that I use that makes threading elastic really easy. Okay, to get started, these are the supplies you're gonna need. So first, obviously, you're gonna need some fabric. This is about three and a half yards of shirting weight cotton that I had in my stash in this really pretty coppery brown color. So you can use anywhere from three to four yards for this project. If you use three yards, you're just gonna have a little bit less gathering. If you have four yards, you're gonna have a bit more gathering, but you can really use a wide variety. So depending on what you have in your stash, you can probably use it if it's in that range. Uh, next, you'll need about two yards of half inch elastic, and then you'll need one and a half to two yards of a drawstring. So I made a drawstring from my fabric, so I have a self-fabric drawstring, just because I didn't have any drawstring on hand. You can also buy pre-made drawstring. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is take this fabric and cut two panels. So we're gonna be cutting two rectangles out of it, a front and a back. So for those rectangles, the first thing you wanna do is determine the length of each rectangle. So in order to do that, you need to know the finished length of your skirt. So it can really be any length that you want. Um, what I recommend is either taking a skirt where you already like the length and measuring that to figure out what finished length you want, or you can just take a tape measure and measure from your waist down to wherever you want it to fall. And then once you have the finished length that you want, add six and five eighths inches to that. So five and five eighths inches is gonna be for the waistband, which folds over, and one inch is gonna be for the hem. And once you know the length of each rectangle, it's time to determine the width of each rectangle. So for that, you want it to be at least twice the circumference of your waist all the way around. So in other words, if your waist is 28 inches, then you'd want each rectangle, the width to be 28 inches. And then when you sew them together, you'll get about 56 inches minus seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want at least that width. Now, I wanna use as much fabric as possible since I have it. So I'm just gonna basically cut this in half. So once I have my length, I'm just gonna cut it in half and use as much fabric as possible to create my panel. So if you have three to four yards of fabric that you're working with, you can absolutely do that. Okay, so I've cut out two big rectangles of fabric, one for the front and one for the back. So my rectangles ended up being about 40 inches long, so that includes that extra for the waistband and for the hem allowance. So about 40 inches long and about 62 inches wide each rectangle. So I used up um, pretty much all the fabric that I had to create these panels. And the next step we're gonna do is sew front to back at the side seams. So sew them along the length and then finish those seams and press them open. Okay, so now we have basically a big tube of fabric making up our skirt, and it should be two or three times the size of your waist at this point. So the next step, we're gonna start on the waistband. And the first thing we're gonna do there is we're gonna finish the top edge. So um, you can use a serger if you have a serger, that's what I'm gonna do. Or you can use a zigzag stitch, you can use pinking shears, however you normally like to finish an edge, just finish that top edge where the waistband's gonna go. The next step is to turn your waistband under three and one eighths inch and press. So that pressed crease is then gonna become the very, very top of your skirt. Open up the fold and mark lines 5 8 inches apart all the way around the skirt. You want to end up with four channels, each marked 5 8 inches from the last one. So there should be four lines marking four channels. Next, measure and mark the center front of your skirt. So measure from the side seams until you get the exact middle and mark that right at the front of your skirt. Next, stitch a buttonhole on each side of that center front mark in the third channel from the top. This is where your drawstring is gonna go. 
The buttonholes can be at any distance that you want. A couple inches is about right. Now I'm gonna fold the waistband back to the inside. Now I'm gonna stitch on top of those lines. So I'm gonna stitch each of those lines, but I'm gonna leave a gap of two inches at the center front of each line. And that's gonna give me some room to put my elastic in. Next, measure out two pieces of elastic to fit comfortably around your waist, and then add about half an inch for an overlap for each one. So you should have two pieces of elastic that are about the size of your waist. Now start by threading the drawstring into that third channel. I like to do the drawstring first because you don't get so much bunchiness from the elastic, so it's a good time to do it. Next, thread the first piece of elastic into the second channel from the top. You can use a bodkin to do this, or you can use the safety pin method, or whatever method that you like to thread elastic. Now thread the second piece of elastic into the fourth channel. Now for each of the two pieces of elastic, stitch the ends together using a zigzag stitch. I like to do two rows of zigzag stitching to really secure that elastic. Once you've got your elastic sewn, finish sewing that gap that you left in order to thread the elastic. All right, your waistband is all done now. So turn your hem up a quarter inch, press, then turn three quarter inch, press and stitch in place to hem. So that's it. I just love the way the skirt looks. I love the way it feels. It's really, really comfortable and it can be a really breezy skirt in the summer or it can be a great layering piece in the fall and the winter. You can wear it with tights, you can wear it with sweaters. I think it's just gonna be a great addition to my closet that I can wear year round. I also wanted to mention this tool that I've been using throughout the video, which is a bodkin. So let me know about down below if you use a bodkin. Uh, it's one of my absolute favorite tools and it's something that for some reason I put off buying for a long time. I didn't think I needed it. I used to use a safety pin all the time to thread elastic, but if you have a bodkin, it makes the job so much easier. It has a ball point at one end so it doesn't get snagged as you thread it through and it has a large eye so it's like kind of like a giant needle with a ball tip so it makes threading elastic really really easy so personally for my own sewing i really like a mix of easy projects like this and things that are a bit more challenging where i get to practice new skills and if that sounds like you too, you might want to check out a Seamwork membership. When you join, you get access to our entire catalog of over 200 modern sewing patterns, from quick and easy tops to wear anywhere dresses to tailored blazers and pants. We help you to design and craft your own wardrobe. Membership also gets you access to Design Your Wardrobe, our popular course that walks you through a process for laying out a seasonal wardrobe that you can sew. Plus, membership includes our library of dozens of sew along classes. And best of all, access to our private sewing community, including tens of thousands of members, where you can post projects, ask questions, and even find sewing friends near you. I hang out there all the time along with Haley and the rest of the team here at Seamwork, and I'd love for you to join me. YouTube subscribers get half off a Seamwork membership, making it an incredibly good deal. To sign up, just click the button on screen or the link in the description below to claim your offer. I hope you loved this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.